Board games are awesome. Board games with miniatures are even more awesome. But you know what's not awesome? Going on epic fantasy adventures or sci-fi quests with unpainted miniatures. If you're anything like me, you're probably in a similar boat. Too many minis, too many games, not enough time. That's why I've made it my personal mission to make sure that we can combat the unpainted plastic in our board games. We want to do this quickly and with minimal fuss, so let's get into it. My name is Ollie, and this is my hobby. This is part two of my speed painting Gloomhaven series. If you haven't seen part one, go check it out up here. But today we're going to be tackling the brute. Not literally, of course, I mean, have you seen those muscles? But we're going to be doing a quick speed paint in 45 minutes to get him up to a tabletop ready standard. I've selected my colours for my scheme to be easy to shade and to go on in a couple of thin coats. I'm going to be doing purpley grey skin, red on the shield and gold and silver trim. We're under starter's orders, so let's get started. Three. Two, one, off we go. I started with the skin as that makes up most of the model. Two thin layers of Eshin Grey were enough to get good coverage. But Ollie, I hear you cry, Eshin Grey is a layer paint, not a base paint. Worry not, dear viewer, for I'm here to tell you that there's no such thing as a base or a layer paint. That's right, you can use any paint to base coat your miniature. The only real difference is how many layers it's gonna take you to get solid consistency. As I didn't have very much time, I wanted to make sure that I got these layers down quickly and it was just the right color for me to be starting from. I used Rhinox Hide to paint the cloak and any fur details, of which there are a lot. And then I moved on to the main focal point, the shield. I picked a really bright red for this, so I started with Mephiston Red. It took, again, about two coats to get even coverage. Whenever I'm doing a speed paint like this, I always like to use a hairdryer. It just gets the layers dried so much more quickly. It's a real must for speed painting, in my opinion. Now, I was going to use Vallejo Gold. Vallejo? Ooh, very Spanish. <laughs> Vallejo? Vallejo, Vallejo. I was planning on using Vallejo Gold for this, but unfortunately the coverage on this paint is really terrible. So I decided to switch back to my old trusty Retributor Armor. Say what you want about Games Workshop's metallic paints, Retributor Armor is a winner. Next, let's make that red pop. I used a 50-50 mix of Mephiston Red and Evil Sun Scarlet, covering the top two thirds of the shield. I then went over this with Evil Sun Scarlet on its own to cover the top third. This should hopefully give us some nice highlights without needing to spend too much time. Next was the obligatory Agrax Earthshade layer, just to add a little bit of definition in between the red and the gold around the shield. You can see here that I did mess up a little bit, but if you go in with a damp brush, you can get some of that shade paint off, keeping the transition nice and smooth. I gave the skin an all over wash with Druki Violet, just to really bring out that purple color. And then I also touched up some of the other metal details with Vallejo Gunmetal. Next, I highlighted up the skin with Demonette Hide, focusing on the face, horns, and bulging abs. Shredded. Retributor Armor is back to do the bands across his chest, as well as the little medallions dangling from his waist. With about half an hour gone, I decided to give some focus to the face, and so painted Wraithbone in the eye sockets and started trying to outline the teeth. These were a real bugbear for me, as I found them really difficult to pick out the details in the time I had. Next was Reichland Flesh Shade over all of the Retributor Armor parts. This gave them a suitably burnished gold look. Then I painted the boots black, and next up comes the part of the video that I would not recommend to anybody. I took my very fancy brush from Artis Opus and used it to dry brush Scrag Brown over all of the cloak and fur details. You did it. I did. I managed to get it back, it's fine. I'm going to buy some new brushes. I'm being killed. I dry brushed with Scrag Brown, probably forever ruining this brush, but I was in a hurry and needs must. This also gave the furs a lot of character with not much time invested and my time was running out. I somehow also managed to dunk the end of the paintbrush into my silver paint I was using earlier, which meant it got all over the brush and all over my hands, so I had to spend some of my precious time going and washing that off before I could continue. With my damp hands coming back, I then decided to finish off the last couple of details and give a bit of focus to those eyes. I painted Thousand Suns Blue over the Wraithbone. This gave him a really very light blue, which draws a lot of attention to that area of the face. I tried to do a bit more on the teeth as well by using my Wraithbone Brown mix, but I wasn't able to get these to a place where I'm happy with. Something to learn for next time. If you've got board games with minis to paint, I'd highly recommend giving this a go. Just give yourself a time limit, it doesn't have to be 45 minutes, but then just sit down of an evening and get something painted up. In this way, the next time you come to the table, you'll have some lovely painted minis, which all your friends I'm sure will be appreciative of. And so here's the completed Brute.
Let me know what you're planning to tackle in the comments down below and drop a like on the video if you have enjoyed it. In the meantime, my name has been Ollie, this has been my hobby, and I'll see you next time.